My name's Ruby, and ever since I could read, I have wanted to be a writer. I've always wanted to write books which would touch people in the way that books have touched me. For the last few years, I've been working on a book, and for the last six months, I've been working with an agent on that book. This week, I was doing the final edits on that book, on that final draft, which my literary agent will be sending off to publishers, and so I thought I would vlog this week and show me writing, basically, and editing just some other things that I got up to too. At the end of this video, I will also be unboxing the new academic planner for this year, which I designed and I am so excited about. Hello, it's Ruby and today I'm going to be starting a weekly vlog. So, and this is going to be a writing vlog, the first kind of proper writing vlog since finishing my degree, which is exciting. So I'm currently working on restructuring, editing a book uh, for my agent. And there are just some final edits and changes that I need to make before we start sending it to publishers. So my deadline for my agent is the 5th of June. So as soon as the bank holiday weekend is over. And this week I am just going to be spending a lot of time writing, working on that. And I thought I would vlog and bring you along. So it's currently... Monday the 30th of May and it's 10 past 10 and I've done a little bit of work on this so far this morning but to be honest I haven't been concentrating all that well. Um, I'm feeling really tired this morning. My plan is there's a scene, quite a long section, it's about 30 pages but I'm cutting it. I need to add something in its place to make sure that the function of the scene is still being played out. There are like certain bits of exposition and character building that happen in the scene and if I take it out entirely then the rest of the plot might not make sense. I'll just put you on time lapse I think whilst I work through that some more. I've also got myself some tea. This is the, oh my gosh I'm gonna forget the name of it, I'll have to put it on the screen. I think it's called Deep Breaths by Bird and Bland. It's so good. I haven't gone for a teacup, I've gone for a mug just, and also I think it might be chamomile actually because look at that. gingerbread chai from Bird and Blend and it's one of their Christmas ones and left for my advent calendar but for some reason I didn't drink it when it came in my advent calendar quick update I finished that scene and um, rewrote that section I'm gonna go back and revisit it because um, obviously it's only a first draft of a new scene. Now I'm kind of slowly working through um, the book and just checking for consistency errors and making sure that everything works. I'm on page 142 at the moment of just under 300. I think more realistically I'll probably get up to page 175 today but I'm going to aim for page 200. It's now 2.30 and you might be able to hear the wonderful rain outside. My book isn't in parts but I've separated it into five parts just for the sake of editing and I'm working on part three at the moment. In total it's 6,000 words I need to edit which isn't too bad and then there's one mini scene I want to add in. I'm actually going to take a break. It's half two and I'm not concentrating particularly well so I think I might take a break until four and then come back to it at four and just kind of get and get some admin done in the meantime. Maybe read because I want to come back to this with a fresh mind. At the moment, I'm not fixing. I'm just currently writing a conversation between two people and one of the characters always makes literary references. That's kind of her thing and I love her. I think she's my favorite character in the book, honestly, even though she's a really minor character. Couldn't, I literally, I've been, I'm, I'd made a note next to this a couple of weeks ago saying you need to find an example in a book, two book characters, 
where one feels inferior to the other and gets very jealous. And I couldn't think of anything, even though I feel like that's one of the main tropes in books and that always comes up, and I couldn't think of anything. And so I asked on Instagram, and yeah, and have had so many good responses. And I only put it up a few minutes ago, and the three really good ones, um, I'm gonna use one of these, Iago in Othello, Joe and Amy in Little Women or Gatsby from The Great Gatsby. Like, there are, they're three really, really good ones. So, thank you. I love this community very much. I'll check back in with you later. I don't know why suddenly it's got freezing, so I'm going to go inside. The writing was quite methodical, to be honest, because I was just going through the book and cleaning up any sections that need to be cleaned up, adjusting any scenes which needed adjusting, and I was going through chronologically, so I just continued doing that in the morning, and this particular day I went up to London because I really wanted a change of scenery and I thought it would be nice to go and find a study spot up in London. It was raining and I ended up finding a place to go and get a drink. I got a smoothie, which was actually not very good, unfortunately. and did a little bit of shopping so I tried on this white shirt because I was looking for a fitted white shirt and I also went to Glossier. I really like the ethos of Glossier, it's a makeup company and that's where I get all of the makeup that I use. And I also went to the Royal Opera House shop, which stocks these incredible prints and designs by Elena Deshmuk, I hope I'm saying that right. And after that, I met my friend Lydianne for some tea, which was really, really nice. We hadn't caught up in ages, so it was just so good to see her. This morning I was actually doing some research and just fact checking a few things. I was also doing some research into cognitive development and particularly the teenage brain and basically just making sure that everything I'm writing, even though it's fiction, is informed. I think it's really important to do this research work when you're writing fiction and I tend to do it as I'm going along. I also wanted to have a big declutter this day. I'd recently got back from a trip to Cornwall and hadn't unpacked my suitcase yet. And I also had a little bit of a wardrobe declutter and got rid of some things and I sorted under my bed too because it really needed a declutter. And I also sorted my bookshelf because it was quite messy and just annoying me a little bit. This kind of confused me when editing because these clips show up as being recorded this day, but I'm wearing something else. So I'm not actually sure if I did record this on the same day, but I'm going to include them anyway because I don't think I've included them in another video. Good morning, happy Thursday. So when I was in London on Tuesday, I picked up four of these little Muji desk organizers. I already have four of these and I use them for this mini chest of drawers I've now got under my desk. It's the bedside table I had when I was really little, like between the ages of one and eight. And um, I've just put it back under my desk because it fits. But I really wanted some drawer organizers. These are each under two pounds from Muji and they're stackable, they're really good, so I'm going to add these into my drawer and organise it now. Also going to give you a quick outfit of the day. I really like this outfit. I'm wearing this beautiful shirt from Miss Patina, which has a cat on it. It's so cute. And then I'm also wearing these shorts, which are kind of, which are in a sailor style. And these I got from Topshop when I was like 13, so... I've had them for a long time. It's about like finding something that you love and you think you will love for a really long time. This is what they're looking like at the moment. Very messy as you can see. It 
Okay, here we are. So this bottom drawer is for letter writing supplies. I've got lots of stamps in here, more stamps here, ink cartridges, ink, paints, a dress book and stickers. And then this is my top drawer and I've just got my washi tapes, which kind of, this does still need a little bit of an organise. Then I've got pens and these two, sticky notes. These are my combos and finally um, sealing wax. And then in this one, this is miscellaneous things. So just miscellaneous stationary calculator. I've got string in this little pot. I keep gum and mints. And then finally in this, this is a bit random. There are lots of stars. So for scenes at the moment, I'm going through and making a note of why the scene is important. Um, just a few bullet points of what the scene does, things to bear in mind in the scene, Lottie's thought process, Lottie's the main character, and then the kind of general progression of the scene in terms of plot. When I'm initially writing, I wouldn't do this, and it's only for this one section that I've actually started doing this, um, but because quite a lot happens quite quickly and the three plot lines all intersect at this point. I just want to make sure that everything makes sense and is coherent. Um, and so, and this is helping me to stay focused and make sure that every scene is actually adding to the plot and adding to the pace. It's currently 10.30 and um, I've made some okay progress this morning so far. It's also a really sunny day. I've had to close my curtains because the sun is too bright. Oh, look at that. There are grey clouds coming. And then on this side, it's really blue. I wrote for most of the afternoon on Thursday, but I went round to see my grandparents for a couple of hours as well. Happy Friday. So today I have written the final extra scene I'm writing for this draft and that's all done now, which is great. So I'm now gonna read over the section that I've just been working on and make sure it is all coherent because sometimes when you've been tinkering around with particular scenes, I find that you might accidentally like miss out a really important point for coherence or like something which is really necessary, you've just cut out. I actually think I might transfer it over to my Remarkable and read it on there because then I can annotate. My Remarkable was gifted to me. I reviewed it in a video, but I'm thinking of doing a full review of it after having used it for a couple of months because I do really like it. I've been using it for six or seven months now and I used it a lot uh, during my degree especially. I don't have Remarkable pro though there's a subscription thing where you can make syncing between devices easier but you don't actually need it in order to sync you just need a cable and you can connect it to your laptop which is good because it's quite expensive <laughs> and the tablet itself is already expensive so the document i'm transferring is actually quite big it's twenty-five thousand. here's how many pages Ah, 92 pages. That's a bit more than I was hoping. Maybe that's a bit too many to transfer. I think I might cut that down a little bit. Red velvet cupcake. It's my red velvet cupcake mix. I'm just going to mix it. Mum has also made Anzac cookies here and here. It's currently three o'clock and my red velvet cupcakes are in the oven. I'm going to go through some more of the book whilst they're in there. And then we've actually got a Jubilee party starting at 3.30, which is only in half an hour, so not very long, um, just with the people um, on our street. And so I will get ready for that afterward. Homemade red velvets here. Homemade 
Oh, sa homemade sandwiches. Homemade. <laughs> <laughs> homemade apple Look. pies. Look at these homemade apple pies. The homemade Anzac cookies. Lots of Anzac cookies. And, and it's like cakes, because we're not we're quite sure how they turn out. And also homemade French fancies. Oh, well, classic they are. And these are made with egg, aren't they? Yeah. Egg, milk. So you couldn't have them. And, you yeah. can have the jam tarts. Yes, I can have the jam tarts. I also can't have these. I don't think. Okay. No. Yeah. Last yeah. ingredient is milk. <laughs> but we have got loads of other things. Um, so, Mum got these Rocky Roads that are vegan, Millionaire Crispy Stackers, and then I picked these up from Asda. They're um, like Colin Caterpillars, but they're vegan ones. I'm all ready now, and I'm gonna head over. This is what I'm wearing. It's this vintage tea dress of my mum's, which I really like, and she gave to me. So, I'm gonna go over. I'll probably take a few clips, but I won't properly vlog. I won't bring my camera because there are lots of people there. <laughs> check in with you before I turn off the camera for tonight. I got back from the Jubilee party at around 7 and I've just been writing since then. It's now 10.30 and I'm going to watch me in bed and read some more of Family of Lives, uh, which I'm loving so much and I don't want to finish it. I'm trying to read it super slowly because I just love it so much. Um, but yes, I will see you tomorrow in the morning. Happy Saturday. Today my dad, sister and I are going to the wave in Bristol, which is this artificial wave where you can surf and we've had this book for months, literally months, um, and I'm very excited. It's quite a drive and we're going to be waiting around for a little bit because my dad's going first and then two hours later my sister and I are going. Here's all my stuff. Packing up my laptop and charges. Lovely noise. We drove to the Bristol Wave and the surfboard was strapped to the top of the car and it was making a very annoying sound the whole way through that you can hear. I was just writing again. It was quite a long drive and so it made sense to kind of utilise that time. I also read a couple of chapters of Family of Liars. And as you can see, this is my dad's surfboard. He wanted to bring his own board. And this is my dad on the wave. As I say, he went on a separate wave to us two hours before. So he's the one on the red board that you can see. And whilst my dad was there and whilst we were waiting for our session, I was again just doing some more writing. Um, they had a little cafe and so um, Martha and I just set up base there. Dad, how was it? It was fun. <laughs> And this is me on the wave here. You can see I'm the one surfing in right now. It's an artificial wave and the idea is that you get a perfect wave every time so it's really good to practice on. Just finished the surf, absolutely for a reason. Then I went and got changed. I put on my amazing cherry bakewell almond butter t-shirt and then I got this vegan fish and chips burger which was really delicious and a great way to finish the day and um, then we did the long drive back we got back quite late and I started reading The Child in Time but I decided I actually didn't want to read any more of it but that brings us to the end of this weekly vlog I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope that you have a productive week my family and I got back from Italy last night and whilst I was away, the most exciting parcel arrived. This is the new academic planner and I'm going to unbox it now. I'm so excited to see it in person. Look, the 
it is quite a slight difference because both of them are on the same colour palette but this is the old blue one and the new one is a match of green colour. So this is it. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. So the new planner actually has 50 more pages than the old one. We've added in monthly planners at the beginning of every month. So I'm just going to show you. Here's October, for example. So at the beginning of every month, we have this double page spread. And this means that you can plan your month at a glance and also your weeks at a glance. And there are loads of new extra planning pages in the middles. There is a lot of new content and um, the page quality and everything is still just as good. So this panel will be retailing for £18.50, which is more than it was last year. It was £16.50, but we've added like 50 more pages, uh, which is why the price has gone up. To have kept the same profit margin that we were on before, I would have had to retail it for £20.50, but obviously that is too much for an academic planner, and I don't want to be selling a planner that's that expensive. So I've made it £18.50, which is a bit more affordable. I know it's still more expensive than last year's planner, but I really think that you're getting the extra quality for your money with this. Weekly planning spreads are something that lots of people have been asking for and something that increasingly, like this last year, I've realised would be really useful. That all within the planner is really, really great. I'm going to use it this morning actually. So I'm going to have a quick look through this and look at all of the pages and um, I will be doing a full flick through of the planner and everything in a separate video like I do every year. So stay tuned for that because it's always really fun and I'll set it up at the same time. It's so crazy to actually see it in the flash. Mm -hmm. 